Is that a ghost? No, it's <laughs> the spooky, scary Halloween Halloween episode of the Pretty Pictures podcast with me. And me. I was trying to think of like you know on the Simpsons where they have like oh. this, the 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 spooky horror nicknames. Yeah, it could be like Matthew crying. Don't think that's really with fear. Oh, Matthew dying. Oh, 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 and nothing. Got nothing with yours. Hmm. For hmm. Write in and tell us what Bria's nickname would be. <laughs> that's a tough one. Yeah. Bria Cando. Bria. And crow. Wink. You're gonna have to wink louder than that if you want it to be picked up. <laughs> Ew. That was her actual eye <laughs> that made that noise. All right. What did we watch today? Uh, Splash. With Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. Oh, scary. No, we did watch that today. What, what was our spooky movie for our spooky episode of our spooky podcast? What did we watch today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did we watch today? We watched Hausu. Hausu. House. Hausu. House. House. From 1977. Mm-hmm. Again. Apparently we like the 70s. The best year for movies. Give me so. some stats. House. Not to be confused with House. Mm-hmm. Or House MD. But there's also another horror movie. That came out in the 80s called House. And the sequel was called House 2, The Second Story. <laughs> Get it? I think they're horror comedies too. I don't know. I've never seen them. But I okay. think the second one was released or like it, the, the, the first one of them was released as in Italy as a Evil Dead sequel. Right. Because there's about like this. four of those like witchery and something else. Like, yeah, there's same with zombie and yeah. Night of the Day. Yeah. Yeah. Day, dawn of the day. day of the dawn of the night of the day. So now the actual house that we watched. So the house, house, houseu. House. From 1977. This one directed by Nobuhiku Obayashi. The screenplay for this movie was done by Chiho Katsura. And something very interesting. The original story was by Chigumi Obayashi, who is the daughter of the director. Oh, really? She was uh, a teenager at the time. Her father got ideas from her. He saw ideas from her, according to Wikipedia, because, uh, quote, adults only think about things they understand. Everything stays on that boring human level. Children can come up with things that can't be explained. And so a lot of the ideas came from just like random things that his daughter would, you know. I love that. Yeah, it's great. And also there's like some for like childhood fears. Like there's the point. My piano? (laughs) I don't think that exact one. Like when... She gets the the one in the, the, the closet with all the bedding. Oh, that yeah. That was one. Yeah, that, that kind of reminds me of The Little Prince. Yeah. Where it's like uh, adults aren't creative. They don't understand things and mm. can't see the big picture kind of idea. Yeah, I haven't read that since we were in school. You should. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and yeah, all three of those, the director, the writer, and his daughter, they all have... Uh, cameos oh yeah as husband train passenger and shoe store girl respectively husband i'm guessing i don't know if that's gorgeous's dad oh maybe it's um the aunt's dad or aunt's husband hmm maybe the handsome man handsome boy that would explain why they he got all of the the, the, the girls to call him handsome when they were doing the flashback nah, 
perhaps. Crack the case. So, a little backstory on the production of the movie. Toho wanted, like, a Japanese response to Jaws. If you can believe that that's where this came from. Uh, Mm. And so, yeah, after he, you know, got all those ideas from his daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, the script was done for two years before they actually started filming. They turned Nobuhiku down as director because back in those days, I guess, and maybe still today, I didn't really look into this, but he wasn't staff at Toho. Okay. And I guess that's a thing. Like, if you're not, if you don't like work at Toho, they're not going to get you to direct a movie or like, you know, do stuff like that, which is very strange. Hmm. But he got special permission from higher ups there to direct it. And he did. Interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. I guess that I guess that kind of makes sense. It's like how you see like some directors are always working with certain production companies. Yeah, especially I mean, more so I would think back in like old Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Then it, I don't know. I could have to do with some kind of Japanese traditions and stuff like that. Just the way yeah. that they, or just the way that they're the way that they think about <sighs> certain things. Yeah. Yeah. And so before the film even came out, there was a a manga adaptation which i'd be oh, yeah? i'd be interested to find to see if there's a translation for oh yeah um there was a novelization mm. and the soundtrack was sco- like the score was done and released bef- all before the movie even came out which is pretty interesting usually yeah. that doesn't happen and also strange because it seems like there's like two or three songs in the movie um, like i guess there's a couple songs by the band go diego was yeah, the band go diego i guess yeah, they had two or three songs in there. Mm-hmm. A lot of just like general 70s synthy. Synthy? Not synthy. There's a lot of piano. A lot of just like general 70s like. Groovy, oh, there was some grooving tunes in there. Groovy, too. like. Yeah. Guitar. I don't know. I did a dance, but you can't really see it. And I don't think that really sells what kind of. No, but music I don't know. Like when you think of like 70s music that's like really. It's like I don't funky. Know, groovy and like funky. Mm. It's just like, it's got some groovy guitar yeah, in it and stuff like that. And so now the, the, the set, while they were filming, it was reportedly very upbeat. Oh yeah? The director, he, he sang and they, they all played games together and like <laughs> trivia games and stuff like that. I don't oh, really know exactly fun. what that means, but yeah. And although the attitude was very positive on the set, mm-hmm. the people who... The, the, the people from Toho, I guess producers and stuff like that, who yeah. were there, like on the set, they thought the film was nonsense. <laughs> they did not care for it. <laughs> and apparently, uh, as well, since most of the actors in the film were kind of nobodies, mm-hmm. they didn't do anything really beforehand. And not, not to say that they haven't done anything since, but I haven't heard of any of the movies that they've been in since. I mean... I'm not, you know, super well versed in Japanese movies. I mean, not. Th- I wouldn't say that. Well, not just like your average Japanese movies. I yeah, suppose. I mean, we have a pretty good grasp on the like really like big name type yeah. movies, but like the smaller. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm. that kind of stuff. But so their acting wasn't great, but uh, apparently they they put the soundtrack like in the scene while they acted, and yeah. that apparently up, uh, improved their acting quite a bit and help, that helped them sense. yeah it helped them get a feel for what the scene was yeah. supposed to feel like and you know yeah. perform better half of a scene in a movie especially in like a horror movie is the music anyway yeah the sound yeah and the sound design so it's like i guess hearing the music while you're filming yeah would help a lot with kind of getting in the mood and especially for this one mm-hmm couple more things. Uh, the special effects, if you've seen the movie, you know what the special effects look like. It's basically like they took the frame and drew over it with marker. He... You know, I was just going to say, it's, I guess, rotoscoped? Kind of. But they're not tracing over mm. the people. It's like adding fake blood or... Just lightning. Lightning and, and stuff. Light, different colors. Different colors. Like, just outlining people. Mm. Just with, like, an orange or mm. a green line. Yeah. And so obviously from that, you'd think, oh, that wouldn't look really realistic. That wouldn't look good. That's what uh, the director wanted. He wanted it to look like a child did them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that kind of comes across, gives yeah. it like kind of a 
whimsical kind of yeah pretend plain pretend aspect to it there's a lot of parts some of the death scenes too they're very like goofy looking yeah um and they're played as that they're played as goofy there's a lot of that like cartoony rotoscoping Mm -hmm. there's a lot of kind of goofy weird stop motion oh yeah and there's like goofy Um, sound effects and stuff too. goofy sound effects and like reversing and playing a small Mm -hmm. section over and over again so you get this like back and forth kind of yeah we'll get to that stuff i want to mention a lot of that um and now uh two last thing or no i guess a couple more things um it was popular with young audiences Mm -hmm. as you'd expect it's very strange and imaginative yeah probably older japanese businessmen probably not attending those (laughs) screenings (laughs) There wasn't any U.S. screenings or U.S. release in any way until Janus Films got the rights to it for their DVD release. That then, was... When was that? Uh, uh, around 2009 is when the first screenings were okay. starting. It got some positive reviews. Uh, and Japanese critics didn't like it, as you'd expect. Even though they didn't like it, uh, Nobuhiku still won the Blue Ribbon Award for Best New Director in 1978. Hmm. Do you know what kind of a budget they had? No idea. No idea? <laughs> no. Probably not a lot. This I w- was. I wouldn't say. This was his first feature film. He has some uh, short films. We watched one of them, the one that's included on the Criterion Blu-ray, which is how we watched this sucker. Yes. We watched it on the 2010 release Criterion Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It has kind of a low budget feel. Yeah. But it still feels like they used every penny of that budget. Oh, yeah. Like it it's there's effort in it very dense and very well put together mm-hmm. dense visually not story-wise no it's kind of sparse but just the like story. visually there's a lot to look at there's a lot of little like almost easter egg type there's a lot of touches small touches yeah little yeah so going into the movie itself it starts off by telling you that it is indeed a movie the first thing that it's that on screen is the uh, it oh, says right, a yeah. movie a movie how so now with this one I, okay, I said in the last episode, Eraserhead, I said we work at a go scene by scene, and then that's exactly what we did. (laughs) Because there's a lot more plot to Eraserhead than I remembered. Yes. Because for all, you know, the jokes, David Lynch writes his movies. You know, there's story to his films. Mm -hmm. It's not just weird visual after weird visual. That's what this movie is, (laughs) more or less. There's not, okay. So I'm just going to say... hmm? It's a pretty straightforward plot. Yeah. There's no, like, twists and turns, really. Oh, there's some twists. Are there? Yeah, dude. I guess... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well... But it's... Basically, it's a pretty straightforward plot. Yeah. There's not, like... It's... There's no learning curve to this movie. (laughs) A a basic plot summary, at least for the first 20 minutes of the film or so. Well, we start off, we meet Fantasy and Gorgeous. Yes. Uh, and Gorgeous, planning to go on a trip, a, 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 a traditional, or not a traditional, but, you know, a, a, a trip that uh, her and her father go on every every year or so, I suppose, since their mother died, or, you know, a family trip. They're going to go on a family trip. Uh, so that's <laughs> that's their plan. They're going to go to Karuzawa, I think is how you pronounce Kar- it. Karuzawa? Karuz- Karuzawa? Kar- Karui... Zawa. Karuizawa. Karuizawa. A place in Japan. They're going to go there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it turns out that her father has a new girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Ryoko. Ryoko. And Gorgeous does not want to go with her. She does not want her to become her new mother, as the father states. And so she decides that she's going to write a letter to her aunt, who she only met once before, and invite herself to her aunt's house. And her friends. Yeah, well, that's because we join the rest of her friends, who we'll introduce as their their big introduction. Yes, in oh the my film. gosh, their big introduction. <clears throat> Ryoko is very pushy about becoming Gorgeous's new mother. She's determined. She wants to do it. She will do it. She does this. She's like, I'll be your new mom. And she does this, like, sensual scarf thing. I guess it's not <laughs> sensual. That's <laughs> kind of creepy. Yeah, but a little bit, buddy. She does this scarf thing where she's like... I'm your new mom. And then she, like, puts the scarf around Gorgeous's neck and, like, fastens it. And yeah. Also, um, 
Ryoko's or not Ryoko's dad. Um, Gorgeous. Gorgeous's dad says she's she's a or she's a surprisingly good cook. Oh yeah. She's good at other things too, and I just thought that was such a strange way to word it. <laughs> like mm, you know. Yeah, she's good at other things too, if you know what I mean, dear daughter. Another thing mm. that I noticed was like these people or these teenage girls. They're probably sixteen. Sixteen. Seven. Yeah. When she runs into her house. Mm-hmm. She jumps up into her dad's arms and he like holds her like bridal style. Does she? Like a child. Oh, she's a little baby. <laughs> I just thought it was really funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we go from there to the rest of the friends, the rest of the girls. They were planning to go on a training camp. I don't know what that means, but they were going to go to a training camp to, I guess, a teacher's sister's <laughs> inn. Mm-hmm. But the sister is having a baby, so the inn is closed, I suppose. So now they can't go there. So, fancy that. They're all going to go to Gorgeous's aunt's house. Yes, they were supposed to go to Mr. Togo's sister's inn. Yeah. And Gorgeous? No, Fantasy. Fantasy. Has a huge crush on Mr. Togo. Yeah. For some reason, he has really early 2000s Patrick Stump sideburns. Mm-hmm. I think even worse, actually. Yeah, they come He really- has the same hat, though. Or no, he has... He has the same hat. So, Gorgeous invites everybody to come to her aunt's house with her. Mm -hmm. They get on a train, and Gorgeous talks about her aunt's history. How her aunt was to be married, and her fiancé went off to the war and didn't come back. And that's sad. And what's interesting about that whole thing is it's done as, like, a film reel. Like, you can hear, like, the film clicking. Yeah. And it's all, like, sepia tone and everything. And as Gorgeous is telling, like, the girls are all commenting on things as they're in shown scene? in this flashback scene. Yeah. And it's just, it's just so interesting. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff like that in the, f- in, in, in this film. There's, it's it sets up the initial scenes are very dreamlike. Mm. The, there's a, there's a very warm color to it. There's like, almost like a bloom effect on it. There's it's like slow motion kind of like that kind of choppy low frame rate slow motion Mm. where they just like slow the film down itself there's strange music that starts and stops and it's the same like music box melody throughout the whole film yes yeah and like the the colors of the scene will change like there's one scene uh, there's there'll be a, a shot of gorgeous and it'll be kind of an orange color and then it'll change to like it'll just for no reason change to red and, and very like stra- strange scene transitions and like frames in frames and just so many things and this is like mostly front loaded so it's like this whole scene from the initial introduction to the two girls all the way until they get to the aunt's house is all like almost a dream i feel like i didn't notice a lot of that yeah as you were saying all that i was like what <laughs> are you talking about so that's like the strange artsy stuff but then you get into the part where they're going on the train and there has to be a reason why the big strong man mr togo isn't with them and it's because he leaves his apartment or whatever and he he falls down the stairs and his butt gets stuck in a bucket and then it's a weird it's so weird it's a weird like he falls down the stairs and then his butt gets stuck in the bucket and then after that point, it's all like him in stop motion going all the all around on the street in stop motion, basically. Yes. And then he has to drive himself to the hospital. While or he, in he a like, bucket. yeah, he like goes to the hospital first. And that's why he's not with the girls right away. Right. To protect them from all this yes. stuff that is soon to come. I, I like the scene with the bucket where it's all stop motion. It. It's very strange. It reminds me of something, and I can't quite put my. There's a lot of that in his short film that we watched called "Emotion." Okay. From. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. It just reminds me of like I don't know what it is that I'm trying to think of. No. I can picture it Uh because it's obviously that's in the scene, but like a old. Just like a silent film type. Yeah, it must be that. Like an old, like silent film where it's like Uh I guess stills. Yeah. Like consecutive stills, almost like one of those like flip things where you like yeah watch the through the little holes and you pay a nickel and you watch the little sure. show. <laughs> I've never done that, but yeah, no, but I've heard of it. I, those things, yeah. yeah. And just 
catching back up to the train and obviously the the, the flashback is very strange because it's just depicted as like a silent film there's also just like outside the train it's all just like paintings pictures like there's no actual like scenery going by it's just pictures in the window and stuff like that oh. yeah and at one point it even showed like the outside of the train and it was just like a cartoon train going right. yeah yeah i think we should have mentioned before too that mm-hmm. when gorgeous writes to her aunt mm-hmm. all of a sudden oh, there's yeah. this white cat that mm-hmm. shows up yeah um and she names him Blanche. Blanche or her Blanche. Yeah. And then when her aunt writes her back, Blanche is sitting on the mailbox. Mm-hmm. And then she can't really find Blanche. There is no letter. And then Blanche is sitting on the, the box with yes. the letter. When Mr. Togo, Togo falls, mm-hmm. Blanche is there. Is he? Yeah. Is, is it the cat? Yep. The, is Blanche the runs cat? by yeah. after he falls in the bucket. Yeah. And Gorgeous is looking for Blanche in the morning that they're about to leave. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I can't find Blanche. I can't find Blanche. And then the girls don't know who Blanche is. Yeah. But then when they get on the train. Oh, yeah. Blanche is just Blanche there. is sitting on the train seat that's supposed to be Gorgeous's. And she's like, oh, there she is. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and then there's a discussion because I don't know why it comes up. I think it just, I mean, people just say things in this movie. They say that. Any old cat can open a door, but only a witch cat can close a door. Right. And that's like not so subtle foreshadowing that Blanche is a witch cat. Spoiler alert. I should probably be saying at the beginning of every of these episodes that there's we're going to spoil the whole movie. So you shouldn't be listening to these unless you've seen these movies or if you don't care. Also, when she finds Blanche on the train, it like Looney Tunes zooms in with a little like yeah, black I don't know. circle. I don't know how to call that. Or the black background and just like... There's Blanche. Yeah, it's like just f- all the frame disappears except for the circle surrounding Blanche. And it does that a couple times. And I don't yeah. know what the technical term for that is. It's like a Looney Tunes circle. A Looney Tunes circle. <laughs> yeah. I wrote Looney Tunes a couple times, Did actually, you? in I my mean, notes. Because there's a couple things that happen that I that remind me of Looney Tunes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cartoony. Which I guess is kind of just the time. Looney Tunes was like... 60s. 50s, 60s. Well... It was before the 60s. I don't know why I said Anyway. 50s, 60s. This movie was the 70s. So I, I'd yeah. say there's probably some influence. Mm. So now once they are off the train, they finally get to where the ho- the aunt's house is approximately, is when we are formally introduced to the whole gang. So now, oh yeah, the cat's on the side of the bus. It's like a basically a... They get off the train and get onto a bus. Mm-hmm. And then the bus takes them to approximately where the house is. Yeah. And there is a cartoon of a white cat yeah. on the side of the bus. Yeah. Yeah, this cat is in probably every scene. You just if gotta you really look. hunt for You gotta him. look. So we're introduced to the gang. The gals. The, the gal pals. First off, we have Melody, who her personality is plays music. She's the musical one. Mm-hmm. And her catchphrase when she's introduced is, come on! Uh, then we have Fantasy, who is one of the first girls. She's like the imaginative... Yeah, she's... She, she's first introduced taking pictures of gorgeous and saying she looks like a witch which is also some foreshadowing there hmm. hmm yes fantasy's catchphrase when she was introduced was okay then we have prof she's the smart one she wears glasses she has those round round smart glasses mm-hmm. so many trees then we have sweet she's like a timid kind of cute one mm-hmm. I, guess. I would also say that she's kind of like the housekeeper type mm. friend like Helping with dinner, cleaning the house, yeah. getting the beds ready. Um, and hers is, I'm scared. <laughs> uh, then we have Kung Fu, my favorite. She's the the, the strong, sporty. Kung, ener- uh, Kung Fu is the funniest. I love Kung hers, Fu. Hers is, I feel energized. <laughs> From nature. <laughs> I guess. All the, the, the nature around her. Then we have Mac, who's the quote unquote fat one who likes food. She's the Jan of the group. And her catchphrase is just a healthy appetite. And then finally we have Gorgeous, whose personality is pretty. She's the pretty one. She's the beautiful one. And her catchphrase was just look at the camera and smile. Yeah. She don't need one. I guess. Her face speaks for itself. She's beautiful. She's, I mean, all right. So they're wandering through the forest and they come up to this like random shop, I guess. 
and there's just like watermelons on it's like a fruit stand it's, yeah it's, yeah that's what i guess what i was trying to say it's like a fruit stand where the guy's selling watermelons and by selling watermelons i mean he has them all out on a shelf and then mac picks one's up pick mac picks one mac mac picks one up mac pick one <laughs> you say it he has all the watermelons on his little fruit stand and mac picks one up and he's like hiding behind it he's just there and i think he scares them does he i think i don't know i, don't I, I think he kind of is supposed to these watermelons are like those expensive fancy perfectly round japanese watermelons that are like 40 dollars for a melon hmm. yeah they look real nice they are that might even be cheap for a watermelon i don't know so they ask him for directions even though you can see the mansion from where they're at right i forgot that yeah and um he says something like no one's been up there in years or something like yeah that. something for he's like the so he's like the one of those like tropey uh, I, I don't, don't go in that house yeah like the, yeah. The, the one like you know the guy from friday the 13th or the one that they used to make fun of it in cabin in the woods the guy in the gas station mm. it's like yeah one of those one of those type but i guess before it was too overused it could even be one of the first because mm-hmm. this is like a year before well i guess i don't know that could have been in like a lot of those old haunted houses because this is basically just a haunted house movie yeah but a little bit more crazy yes he gives him he doesn't know how to get there and mac starts to take a watermelon but then she realizes she's holding it and she takes it back to him hmm. and he says something don't remember i don't remember what he says but anyway he laughs and this like cut out watermelon face behind him laughs yeah and then it just cuts away and then he's gone you don't see him until the end of the movie. Yeah. They finally get to the aunt's house. She she greets them at the door. She's in a wheelchair, which they never really explain why. Even though one of the girls asks, what happened to your legs? Right. You're very rude, but we don't know what happened. Uh, Fantasy tries to take their picture, but then Blanche's eyes glow green, and the camera flies out of Fantasy's hands. And Smashing breaks, the lens. Smashes on the ground. And then the aunt says something about, you know, cheer up, don't be sad. It's just a camera. Yeah. And then she's happy again. She's good. Kind of. She doesn't look very happy. She looks like she's pretending to be. They get into the house and the aunt talks to the chandelier while she's turning the light on. (laughs) And something, one of the crystals on the chandelier falls. Hmm. And Kung Fu uses karate. Yeah. To stop it from hitting one of the other girls on the head something like that like okay it's just a lot of images happening like it's one of those scenes where it's just stuff the chandelier f- the, yeah. the, the, the crystal falls kung fu goes flying in the air with a kick one a sweets hat like flies off her head the cat goes flying the chandelier crystal falls into a lizard <laughs> like a yeah. stop motion lizard and kills it and then sweets hat falls back on her head or maybe it was melody i don't know one of the two and I think Sweet was wearing the hat. Yeah, well, it falls on Melody's head then. Okay. I guess. I don't remember. And that. then the cat goes and eats the lizard or something. It, this all yeah. happens within the span of like two seconds. Yeah. Um. I also noticed, and this is the first time you see it, every time Kung Fu does her martial arts stuff, yeah. it plays that like stereotypical like kind of music. Yeah. yeah. And everyone go after she's finished, everyone goes... Kung Fu, you're so cool. And then it's like they're all like clapping and cheering for her every time she does something. Because she's so cool. she's so cool. You have to. And I just wish my friends would clap and cheer for me every time I do martial arts. Well, do them more often and then they might. That's true. After that, everything kind of calms down and they start to make, they go to the kitchen, they start cleaning up and everything and they go to make some dinner. Mac comes back with a watermelon and the fridge is broken, so they gotta put it in a well, because that's how they used to do it in the old times. Yeah. They all do that thing that you see in, like, Studio Ghibli movies, where it's like, we have to clean up this house, and, yeah. like, get everything sorted, Cleaning and, like, montage. we're gonna cook, and we're gonna clean, and one yeah. of the girls actually even does that thing where they, like, hold the rag down, and they're, like, standing on their hands and feet, and they, like, run it yeah. down the hallway. <laughs> so then, they, you know, they mix up and everything. Now, this is the first death in the movie. After they put the watermelon in the well, and... Gorgeous's aunt comments on how tasty Mac looks. Then they they have supper, and Mac goes to get the watermelon, but then she doesn't come back. So then Fantasy goes after her, mm-hmm. and she pulls the 
something out of the well. It turns out to be Mac's head. And then she starts talking, floating, and then bites her on the ass. Yep. And she's like flying around and then yeah. Fantasy runs into the house screaming. Mm-hmm. And all the girls try to figure out what's going on and try to console her. Yeah. They go back out to the well to check. Yeah. And they pull up whatever's in the well and it's the watermelon still. Oh, what could have happened? They're eating the watermelon and then the aunt looks at Fantasy and she shows her that she has an eyeball in her mouth. And then in that same scene later on, the watermelon is like shaking and making noises. Yeah. And I think you can hear Melody or not Melody, uh, Mac. Max's voice when the watermelon mm-hmm. is shaking too. Yeah. So they're all eating her. Yum. So there's a lot of weird things that happen after that as if that wasn't enough. You have water in the house turning red. Gar just goes to take a bath. And then there's, you can see hair kind of creeping up her back. And yeah. I very much saw that as, I don't know if that's like the first instance of that, but definitely reminded me of a lot of newer J-horror stuff. Like, oh God, yeah. Uh, the Ring and The Ring for Juan. sure. Yeah. Like that scene in the shower in right, Juan. Right, yeah. And... Maybe Dark Water. I don't remember an exact instance, but I can. I mean, I'm sure it's probably in Dark Water. So that's a Japanese ghost movie that has to do with water. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Uh, there must be hair. I think there's hair in Dark Water. Probably. Or I mean, obviously there's hair, but like hair is yeah, like a dark hair is like a thing in Japanese horror ghost movies. Yeah. I don't know why. I guess it's kind of it. it's gross and creepy. Then you have a scene with Kung Fu chopping wood, and then the wood comes to life, and then and she, she has to fight it. She has to fight it. She loses her skirt. Somehow. She just lands well, she in her... she still has a bathing suit bottom on. Yeah. That matches the skirt. Yeah. There's a scene when they're in the kitchen, and the aunt can all of a sudden stand up because all these young girls are here, and they revitalized her. They revitalized me. And uh, then she walks into the fridge, and she fantasy... Like, she opens the fridge door, and she like sits in it, hmm. and like sits back into it, and like falls into it. And then fantasy freaks out, and she uh, the aunt pops up on the rafters and looks at the camera and smiles. Then she starts dancing, and then she appears in another room and is dancing, and then there's a skeleton that starts dancing with her. Yeah. And it's like to that same piano song that's yeah, the, the, been kind of yeah. on and off through the whole movie. Yeah. So something I noticed is that there's a scene where the aunt, presumably from what I... I, I only really noticed it this time after like kind of deciphering the film, which this is the only thing I got from it that I didn't... Because <laughs> everything is kind of face value. It's just weird stuff. But this time, uh, you have Gorgeous who goes into the aunt's room. And she's yes. like looking through all her drawers and stuff. And then she puts on her lipstick. Mm-hmm. And then the aunt appears in the mirror and the mirror cracks and then starts bleeding. The scene with the mirror reminded me a lot of the video in the ring. Yeah. When the mother is mm-hmm. brushing her hair in like the picture frame or mirror or whatever. Yeah. Because you just see different things flashing through the end of the mirror mm. and then leaving and like. The aunt's there putting on her makeup and it's just different yeah. things with the mirror. It reminded me a lot. Or I guess the ring reminds me of the house because it came first. But Yeah. Yeah. So then, yeah, she, she puts on the makeup the aunt's in the mirror and you have the blood coming from the mirror. And then Gorgeous's face starts cracking and falling apart. Mm-hmm. Then she's all like chroma keyed out and she's like she's just made of fire. She's just made of fire. Yeah. And. Uh, after that, Gorgeous has been, like, possessed by the ghost of her aunt at that yes. point. And, uh, and also I noticed in that room, she has the same rose that she was holding in the flashback. Really? Or at least a rose, because it's, like, that very bright red that the, was, like... The flashback? Oh! Yeah, when yeah. it was showing how her husband died, she was holding a rose in, like, in front of his grave or mark or whatever. And, like, she held it really tight and she started bleeding. And it was, like, that kind of rotoscoped, colored in red... Yeah. And it was like that same rose was sitting there on a on on a desk and I never noticed it before. Um I didn't notice it this time when we were in the ants room, but I noticed it towards the end when we were in the ants room. The ants room and Gorgeous's room from her house are the same room because they have the same wallpaper. Are they? Oh, I didn't notice that. The like big flowers. Big flower, yeah. Yeah, they're the same room. Interesting. I don't know if that's just a budgetary thing or if that was that supposed to be, be something. Or... <laughs> that could be a foreshadowing, I guess. Maybe. It's a lot harder to see in the ants room because there's a lot of like ivy and stuff growing on the ants. Yeah, that's probably why I didn't notice it. I wasn't mm-hmm. looking at the wallpaper. Yeah, I didn't notice it this time. I noticed it towards the end. Yeah. So now we have 
poor sweet. She's cleaning up and she's trying to figure out where the bedding is so she can make everybody's bed, I guess. Because she's the mom friend. She's the mom friend. Blanche locks her in the in that room. Soft. And she gets attacked by bedding and dies and disappears. Yeah, there's a doll there. And she's just gone. All her clothes are still there, but she's gone. And it, is it sweet that later on we find, or we don't find, I guess, but is in, like, getting crushed in the clock? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know what that is. She's just there. Just put her there. Hmm? Uh, a mummy pops out of a closet yeah, but it's <laughs> at some like, point. It's like a store mannequin just wrapped in bandages. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. Gorgeous, possessed by her aunt, or the aunt just using her body or whatever. She leaves the house and, like, that locks all the doors and everything, and then all the other girls are trapped in. All the ones that are left alive are all right. trapped in there. They have Melody play the piano to calm everybody down, and then she seems to be hypnotized because the aunt had put sheet music there mm-hmm. and like it's like a special sheet music and that's like the mel- the the music box song yeah and she's playing it and then she's like playing it faster and faster and then the piano like lights up the keys light up and then it starts like the the what is that thing that's just the, the cover just like the cover for yeah the keys. starts like slamming down and then she lifts her hands up and she says oh my fingers are gone yes that was the one death scene Mm. or i guess she's not dead yet but just she does die she gets eaten by the piano yeah um and it's very colorful and very like there's lots of music and chaos and it's probably the scene where that rotoscoping type thing is used the Mm. most yeah her like body parts are like like floating in midair and like spinning around and stuff and they're all like outlined and Mm -hmm. colorful that is the death scene that i remember the most from the movie yeah i had watched a review of the film Mm -hmm. before i'd watched it and that's like the scene like i can yeah i remembered watching that's the the part of the movie i have the most vivid memory of and while she's playing the skeleton is dancing behind her again oh yeah very important that skeleton (laughs) loves to dance (laughs) he's always dancing we cut back to mr togo we've cut back to him before we've neglected to mention but this time is very important because he's eating noodles yes served to him by a bear I think they make it look like the bear is serving them, but I think afterwards you realize that the bear is just like a stuffed bear. I don't know in if it is. Kiosk. I don't know if it is, buddy. Because I was going to say he was served by a bear. I think you. I think the bear was a noodle chef. Interesting. I think. I think he well, was. Well, in this shot after that, it's just a stuffed bear. It is no longer an is actual it? bear. Well, it's not an actual well, bear. No, but. So now is when we discover. We were told that the aunt lure or. The aunt feeds off of young unmarried girls who come to the house, the houseu, and she does this to stay alive because she believes that her husband who died in the war had not died and she's just waiting for him to come back. He so that's, will be back eventually. Yeah, who knows? She's trying to get these last few girls. We're, we're left with fantasy, kung fu, and prof, and this is when the house goes crazy. Yeah. Everything's flying all over the place. There's like, this is where your Easter eggs come in. There's like paper koi fish and like paper umbrellas and just furniture and stuff flying all over the place. And then Kung Fu decides to fight back. She goes and busts through the wall to fight the gorgeous ghost and gets beaten, I guess. She's thrown back into the house and she gets eaten by a ceiling lamp right? and then electrocuted. But then her legs get spat back out and she go. they go and they fly. They kick the cat that's on the wall that they discover is where the, the, the power is coming from. The spirit of the house, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. And that causes Gorgeous Ghost to start bleeding and dying, I guess. I guess, yeah. And this is where the cat, the wall, the, pain, the cat on the wall starts spraying blood everywhere, Evil Dead style. Yes. And the floor kind of falls apart and... There's just like a sea of blood. Apparently, according to one of the girls, it's the cat's blood. I don't know how they know that, but I guess it's because... I guess. I don't know. During all of this, too, we cut back to Mr... Togo. Togo, whose name I can't remember for some reason, ever. I don't know. Uh, We cut back to Mr. Togo, and he's at the fruit stand. Oh, yeah. I didn't make a note of this because I had no idea how to describe it, aside from just like writing exactly what happens, which I guess is mostly what we've been doing I don't really remember what happens. He talks to the watermelon stand man. Yes. I don't know what he says. 
And then the watermelon stand man turns into a skeleton. Right. And then the skull starts floating. And then Mr. Togo gets scared and jumps back in his car and starts repeating banana. And he's like, he states, he said, keeps saying banana and like hitting his head. And it's like, he doesn't keep doing it because it's just a film played it's back just and forth. being looped back. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, that happens. The next time we see Mr. Togo, he is turned into a pile of bananas. Yeah. That's his arc. Yeah. Back to the girls. We have <laughs> Prof falls in. She gets like attacked by some kind of thing with teeth dragged into the water and it seems like she's fine except she's naked now but then she starts dissolving and again it's like rotoscoped and yeah dissolved by uh, the deathbed (laughs) and then we have fantasy's the only one left and it seems like gorgeous is back to normal and saves her Mm -hmm. but then you know in her in the reflection in the blood pool it's still the aunt so she's still there and then But I guess Fantasy just gives up and accepts. I don't know if Fantasy realizes, does she? She kind of does, and then she just grabs her hand anyway, and I don't know. She just doesn't... I mean, at a certain point in that kind of a situation, you'd have to just go, fuck it. I guess so. Yeah, so then we have Ryoko, the the stepmother-to-be, I guess. She comes and finds the the Haosu, and she meets with Gorgeous, and... Uh, yeah she gorgeous greets her and then her eyes shine like blanche's did every time she was about to cause someone's death Mm -hmm. and then ryoko's head catches on fire and then we have a shot of gorgeous and it's the aunt's voice having a a a monologue about how love is the only thing that never dies Hmm. and cut to credits the end the end Um, i have written down all of our cat sightings all of them well maybe not every cat sighting the ones that i noticed okay so aside from just blanche being okay. there we have the hidden cats we have the subliminal cats yes we have the cat on the side of the bus uh-huh there are cats outside the closet door that sweet goes into to get the bedding mm-hmm. there is a cat in the window yeah when they're pacing around trying to figure out how to open the doors that closed mm-hmm there's a cat on the book that Prof finds. Yeah. There's ceramic cats on the mantle. Yeah. There's just the cat painting towards the end. That's yeah. just freaking There's out. a bunch of cats painted on like the, and the, a, the paper doors. Yeah. A bunch of cats on the doors with glowing eyes as well. Oh, yeah. And then there's a window in the house that just looks like an ornate window, mm-hmm. but it's got, it's like lit from behind white. Yeah. And it's got two little triangle shapes on the top. I thought that looked like a bat. It kind of does, but where it's white, hmm. I think it's supposed to be the cat. Ah. Because it's got two little triangle ear shapes on the top, hmm. and then on the bottom, there's two little, like, lines in the window that make it look like it's got two little paws up on the oh, wind- on the wall. <laughs> so that's our cat count. The cat countdown. Cat countdown. Um, that's all I caught. There's probably more. There's probably more. Yeah. Um, I wasn't actively looking for them until about halfway through. Yeah. So I guess, I don't know, the cat kind of symbolizes danger and death yeah. in this one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Jonesy? Uh-huh. I don't know. I'm like, Jonesy? That's the only other movie we watched with a cat in it. Okay. You said he symbolizes death in this yeah. one. Yeah. Just in this, yeah. In, I guess. Jones- in this film, this this white cat. Yeah. Jonesy symbolizes... A cat. Love. Life. So now, yeah, that's our that, that's our little synopsis slash analysis of the film. Do you have anything else to say about Haosu? Uh, I mean, not that I can think of at the moment. It's very entertaining. It, it, I feel like it's a very good, maybe it's not the perfect Halloween movie. It is very emblematic of Halloween. It's got witches. It's got ghosts. It's got uh decapitation yeah it's got you know it's got the murders you've got skeletons you've got a mummy in there you got it's not a black cat but you got a cat in there halloween cat for you you got blood you know you got also if you're a you fan of that like technicolor halloween orange and bright green and yeah. purple that type of if you're a fan of colors aesthetic okay i don't know i don't know what you're talking about I feel like it's got a lot of colors. It does. Just, Just like, I don't know. It's a good movie. It is a good movie. What are you giving it? Rating. Um, out I... of, give it, out of five. Pumpkins. Pumpkins. Ghosts. 
<laughs> what? I'm trying to decide what we're rating our Halloween movies out of. You've rated out of pumpkins, I'll rate it out of ghosts. I don't like ghosts. Fine. I'll do pumpkins. Oh my god. I give this four out of five pumpkins. I think it is visually a very good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the story is a little... And maybe it's because it's overdone now. Yeah. Maybe at the time it wasn't so much, maybe. Probably not. But I, I just feel like it's the same story you hear over and over again mm-hmm. with horror movies. It's, oh, this person is waiting or has a revenge story and they gotta kill these people in the house because they gotta. But it's a very good looking movie and there's a lot of interesting visuals. I feel like four is very low for how much I say I love this movie. Maybe I'll go four and a half ghosts. Okay. Out of five. For most of this, yeah, I'd say it's the, one of the most interesting visually films that I've probably ever seen, honestly. Mm-hmm. It's, I like, every time I watch it, I've only watched it a handful of times, but every time I do, it's, you're catching new things, and I just feel like I'm, because for, there's just so much to it. Yeah. That you're always forget like I always forget about half the stuff in the beginning and like before they get to the house. I'm always forgetting about like the strange like matte sky and the the animation on like the, the, the train and all that stuff and yeah. and all that and like there's just like really iconic imagery, honestly. Mm-hmm. Cause uh, uh, you know, the shot of her, like there's a shot where the it, it's a it's a wide shot of the house and then it like animates into like a large house and then turns into gorgeous gorgeous ghosts oh, with her right, arms yeah. spread out and she's wearing like a very ornate kimono with like a headdress and stuff and it looks really cool and that's just that always sticks with me it, i mean it, it's also on the main menu for the blu-ray um which doesn't you know that helps well to, to not forget it because every time you pop it in, it's there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just it's so good visually. And yeah, I think the only the only downsides I'd really give it is that closer to the end, it starts to kind of not drag, but I, I guess it seems to it, it's only 88 minutes long. So it's weird to say that it goes on too long. I know it, what you mean, though. It kind of like does the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And it kind of in the beginning, it's like all the girls are being killed off in like ironic ways. Like Mac gets killed while going to get the watermelon that she wants to eat so badly. And sweet gets crushed or whatever by the bedding that she's it's like, she's the clock, but is she killed. I mean, I don't know. But then it's like at the end, it's like, Oh, prof just falls into the pool of blood and disintegrates. Yeah. Yeah. I find, I know what you mean. I don't really know how to word it either, mm. but to the end, doesn't drag but it just seems it it loses its imagination yeah in a way it gets not convoluted but just tired yeah 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 Yeah. i think that's part of my four too just that it yeah it does it loses me at the end a little bit yeah but it's the beginning the first like the first like hour Mm. or more is just so strong that that doesn't it's only that half star that it gets taken from that little dip at the end. Yeah. That's that's it for me. Okay. So yeah, that's that's our rating for this one. I feel like that was a better writing segment. I feel like we went into it a bit more than just saying, I like it. It's good. Go on. Anyway. This is, yeah. That's better. We sh- Yeah, definitely um, do that. Mm-hmm. For the next time, <laughs> we really need to come up with a concrete way of doing this thing damn thing well we're only on our third episode i think we can oh yeah i mean we'll evolve but yeah i i just feel like i i want us to be the best damn podcast we can be there you go know what i'm saying yeah so um, that would help yeah feedback on that would help yeah what do you want us to do we I, we have some segments for kind of bouncing ideas with? around yeah toying around. We'll, and i we'll think f- that that cat count will definitely stick <laughs> Every episode, you'll have a cat count. It, some <laughs> half it might be zero most of the time, but you well, never know. We'll see. It might be a surprise. So far, we have a an lot. overwhelming majority cats. This is true. Do you count the cat that was almost in Eraser Hood? Probably not, huh? Because it wasn't in the movie. <laughs> we don't know. It wasn't. I still think those guts were the cats. No, it wasn't. Um. Okay. 
Do so, you have a recommendation? Yeah, recommendation. Um, Maybe try to keep it spooky. Oh, for the Halloween season. Season. Yeah, my, uh, yeah. Our spooky pictures. This is scary. Scary. This is scary, scary. I personally liked my spooky pictures, okay, but that's yeah, fine. Well, whatever. Do you have anything? I do. Whoa, okay. My recommendation is... <laughs> Hope the, you don't take mine. Oh, I'm stealing it. Shit. I don't know what it is, but I think you probably know what mine's gonna be. Probably. Um, is it yours? We'll see. <laughs> My recommendation is the original Japanese Juwan movie. Don't watch the American one. It sucks. Juwan the Grudge. The third installment, I mm-hmm. guess, of the Juwan series. Yeah. The original Japanese series. It is so good. Spooky. It it is. It's a very good movie. It, mm-hmm. Japan does horror right. Japan does ghost horror right. I found I find that most horror movies that deal with ghosts, especially nowadays, because like they're all the same. But like even, I mean, Poltergeist is good, but it's not very scary. There are parts of it, but like I feel like the Juon films, all of them. Well, not all of them, but like <laughs> not, yeah, all, not, not, not all, them. not all of them. Uh, but like yeah, I mean, especially The Grudge. It has a very consistent feel of, like, there's just suspense and dread, almost. Yes. There are scenes that they do in the Japanese movie that they try to do in the American movie. Yeah. And the Japanese movies... Not good. The scene just goes on and on, and the longer you watch it, the more unsettling it gets. And in the American version, it just, like... It's like on for a second and then it's gone. And you don't even get a minute to like realize what you're looking at. Which is very strange because the first two, you have the, okay, there's the two short films and there's the two curse movies and the two grudge movies. Mm -hmm. Then you have the first two American grudge movies. Every single one of all of those movies are all directed by Takeshi Shimizu. I don't know why the American ones don't work. They're directed by the same people, I same guy. I think it's the target audience, and that's just the way that American movies are done. It could, yeah, there could so be the editing. He, and the, yeah, I don't even think it's necessarily the directing that no. he did. I think it's the editing at yeah the end, just of the, the day. edit, the pacing of the scenes and stuff. Yeah. So, do you have a recommendation? I think so. Yeah, most people have probably seen this one by now because it was pretty big in the you know indie horror kind of subgenre, if you would, if you will. Uh, I'm going to say The Witch. The VVH. The Witch. Very slow burn horror movie. Mm-hmm. Very spooky. Very atmospheric. It's like, I had no idea what that movie was going into it. Like, I, no, I, I literally had no idea. I didn't even know it took place in like whatever century it takes place in. Colonial. Like colonial times. I didn't even know it took place it, then. <laughs> so like, I had no idea what it was about. And I feel like I got to watch it again at some point just because... Not that I didn't appreciate it or whatever, I loved it, but I feel like I'd get more of it from a rewatch. A second watch? Yeah. Yeah, I really want to watch it again. Are we going to watch it this We probably October? will. Yeah, man. If I'd we, like to. I mean, I, we, I do at least, you just don't have enough time, but no. every October for the past three years, I have watched, a, I mean, I've, for the past almost two years now, I've watched a single movie. I've watched a movie every day. Mm-hmm. but guaranteed october i watch a horror movie halloween movie horror adjacent movie every day for the whole month sometimes i do double features for like related movies like i'll do a movie and <laughs> its remake or a movie and its sequel or something like that but yeah most of the time i like to do new movies ones i haven't seen but i think i'm gonna have to make an exception for a couple movies yeah notably the witch because it's so good and i got that steelbook blu-ray you did it's so nice it's so good got it for my b-day when it came out and that's how we watched it and also how we watched it was not great we watched it in my room on my tiny tv cramped Mm. on my bed because i got no place to sit in my room uh but yeah that we definitely gotta watch that and you definitely gotta watch it if you haven't seen it because it's really good but just be aware again it's a very slow burn it's just not full of jump scares I mean, it's I th- uh, the grudges as well, but I think the grudge has more scares per minute. Traditional, yeah, like horror. yeah, that's the thing too. The witch is not. It's it's very it's it's psychological until it's not. Uh, so yeah, the witch. That's that's my recommendation for this episode. Okay, 
We have ratings done. Well, yeah, we did the ratings. Did recommendations the recommendations are done? We, yeah, we talked about a movie. Okay. We okay. Yeah. Yeah, we did check. Yeah. Uh so yeah, that's it for this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna try and keep mixing up. We're gonna try and we're gonna figure out what works. Definitely. Yeah. We're still kind of we're new at this spitballing here. Yeah. If you have any recommendations for what segments, movies you want us to see, just any kind of feedback, definitely leave a comment on the YouTube video that mm-hmm. you're watching this on because that's um, how we're uploading them. Please like it. Like it. If subscribe you if you like want. It, subscribe yeah. if you want. We are also on Twitter at Pretty Pics Pod mm-hmm. and Tumblr, Tumblr. Pretty Pictures Pod. Tumblr.com. Mm-hmm. We also have a Gmail. We have a Gmail. Email us, if and you... it's the same. Pretty Pictures Pod at gmail.com maybe a recommendation maybe a question anything you want yeah if you have questions we can read them on on air we can respond to you i mean you know we're not expecting a whole lot at the moment but you know it's it never hurts to just put it out there we'll definitely we uh we we, we're trying our best we'll do it and we'd appreciate some feedback yeah something else too we're also on we're both on letterbox if you want to track what we're watching and maybe add us on as a friend on there look check out our lists and our diaries and stuff you can search us both up by uh just our names matthew ryan and bria kando uh so you can follow us there we might follow you back if we want to yeah if we like your movies and stuff and you seem like you have some good <laughs> if opinions you're, if you're active because that's yeah the thing. we're not gonna follow you if you don't use it and yeah i guess the, that's all our uh i mean you can follow us on anything if you want yeah if you can find us oh, if you okay. dare so yeah that'll be it for our plugs for this episode and i guess that's uh that's we're done for this one huh so we'll see you in two weeks for our next halloween themed podcast episode episode yeah uh we might we could do something a little special with that one we could even you know discuss some some halloween stuff topics Mm -hmm. if we have any uh who knows we'll we'll see i mean we're still spitballing we know what movie we're doing but that's a surprise yeah we'll, we'll figure out if we can fit anything else in the episode uh yeah so i guess that's it for this one so we'll see you next time bye bye bye